Are you tired tonight? Do you sometimes leave the job dragging and wondering if you can make it one more day? Do you drive home and say to yourself, I need different work? Do you know what working too hard means but yet don't know what to do? Yeah. Do you think of education as a package that you need to deliver? Something that you need to hand out to kids? Well, here comes my edge back. What if rather than a unit or plan, you thought of a lesson as a collection of experiences with multiple opportunities for students to show you knowledge, with creativity in their own method? What if you gave them the power? Besides, you're all aware of how shorter our attention spans are. I'm looking around right now, for right now you're looking at me. But in about two minutes, about half of you are going to put your heads right back in your phones or your computers and not have any idea what I'm saying. I don't think this is a bad thing, though. I see a different approach. I see this as an opportunity. I see this as a way and a shift of what we're using, how we're using technology, and the things around us to allow kids to have the power of voice. I was once told and once believed that I needed to be an entertainer, that I needed to stand up in front of a classroom with students, and I needed to be a superhero, and I needed to be everything for them. Well, this is inherently a disaster. Number one, I feel very awkward at times. It's the first problem. And number two, like a snowstorm, it may be fun to watch for a while until you actually have to dig out. If you're always needed to drive, if you always need to drive everything, on days when you're off, the train is going to go off the tracks. You must give voice to others, and in turn, give up power. You have to show them that they are beautiful, powerful individuals, and that they have the ability to motivate and move everyone. You must give the voice to students. You will need to ask them questions, you'll need to have your tasks for them, but ultimately get out of the way and let them speak, write, solve, or do whatever. You must make them do the work, not by yelling at them or demanding, but by showing them that there is no other way. And what do, what do I mean by that? You just tell them to do it, they do it, right? <laughs> you must establish an atmosphere of creators. Where they want to go lets you drive your learning. You must foster an environment where students know to seek each other out or go through a feedback process independently before claiming, I am done. If you want to take one thing away from what I'm talking about today, just remember this. Just stop talking. Just stop talking. So on Monday, when you're in classrooms and you think you talk too much, you have. So stop. <laughs> Don't be that person that you all have seen speak. That person that says, hello, my name is, and you've already tuned them out because they're trying to sell you something. Trust me, no matter how captivating you think you are as an educator and how great you think your jokes are, by November, even your most loyal student is going to look at you and say, shut up. They may not say it out loud, or in some of our buildings, they might say it out loud, but they're going to say it in their heads. Creating activities that require them to think verbally, explain verbally, write reflections and observations, and then record their thinking. Recording their thinking is big, and I'm gonna come back to that. Conference with them one-on-one. -on -one. Ask them good questions, and a million other ideas. Not only about the content they're learning, but how they feel about that content. Always try to bring it back to a feeling, where they have to think through their own experiences, their own context, and their own history to explain what they're thinking. You want them to be both angry and elated when they sit in your classroom. If they're not angry and elated, at least a couple times a day, you're not doing your job. No matter the age, they will never get tired of telling you what they think. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. What does he mean feel? That makes no sense to me. Right now, a lot of middle school and high school friends are saying, feel this right now. <laughs> a typical pool, here's problem number one. A typical pool is 5.5 feet deep and 10 by 20 feet wide. How many feet is that? There's a definite answer. We can all check it together. We can trade and grade. You can hand them in, I can hand them back. You're right, you're wrong. Here's another problem. Are you a diver, a lap swimmer? Lap swimmer? Do you like to play sharks and minnows? Do you want to just skim rocks across your pool? What is the purpose of your pool? Think about it. Now, what would the dimensions of your pool be to satisfy your needs? Label these dimensions and identify the cubic key so we know how much water to have delivered. Interesting. Why can't most tasks require this shift in thought? You won't get a standard answer. 
He may not know the answer right away. Ask them to prove and explain why they chose those dimensions. They now have to apply some emotion and opinion to their answers in their math. This is a very basic change in wording to a question. I would challenge you to come up with much more creative and multi-tiered approaches and tasks. Just remember, standards don't require answers. What they require is an understanding and an ability to explain at an appropriate grade level. It is not good enough to stop or only allow students to tell you what they learned. I can ask Google questions and it will tell me what I I'm going to define you like the next person. Tell me what I found. And then to tell you from different perspectives, including their own. I want to know how they feel about what they have learned. I want them to explain in their own words what they've learned. I want them to apply to new mediums what they learned. I want them to share what they learned, possibly with a link. And this is where I'm coming back to that recorded part. I want them to learn together, just like we're doing here today. If you can get them to that, if you can get them to a link, they can share it with anybody. Think about that. We've never been able to do that before. Every one of your students can create a link of something they've learned and share it with anybody they want in the world if they can find someone to read it or listen or watch it. I want them to know what they share is important. I want them to know what they share does matter. And I want them to share, and I want them to know what they share should be shared. The creation of something as simple as a link is proof that you have confidence in your message. As I speak on this mic, I ask you to give up yours. I am tired. I am working too hard. I have already said too much. I need to hands off. You need to show students that they are going to change the world, not us. I am not changing anything. But in order for that to happen, we have to get them ready to lead their own voice, not be told what to say. We just want to allow, push, maybe even really hard at times, and help them develop, develop their voice. Whatever that may look like or sound like to you, allow them to develop their voice.